simple harmonic motion and angular frequency. So let's remind ourselves for simple harmonic motion, what do we mean? We mean, for example, it could be a mass uh, with some springs attached to it. And remember that we call this one here x equals 0. That's the equilibrium. And as it moves to the right, if it's you know moving left and right, for example, maybe over here we'll call this here um, maximum. But we actually call it x0. So we actually call it that as well. So we say x equals x0, which is the maximum. Okay, and remember that the definition is that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Remember that means we have this equation here, uh, a, um, maybe I'll write it like this, I'll say a is proportional to minus x here. I'll put that down for both of them. And what are we really talking about here? Well, in the first one, uh, for this one here, if it's proportional, that means, you know, that's the x here. And if it's opposite in direction, oh, then we're considering the minus. That's really what these mean. Okay, so we have an equation for this, and I hinted at it uh, before in another video, but it just goes like this, a equals minus omega squared times x. And this is an equation that's in your data booklet. So let's make sure we define everything. So x is the displacement from equilibrium, that's gonna be measured in meters. We're gonna have acceleration, which is measured in meters per second squared. Fine, and then we've got angular frequency, which I just wanna remind you, it's actually in radians, per second, so we'll say seconds to the minus one like this. And let's uh, maybe remind ourselves about angular frequency, so that's why I got an exam tip for you. What's the distance if you go all the way around a circle? That's a circumference, and if you remember that, it's two pi r. Well, angular frequency then is just, it's kind of like saying a speed, so it's a distance over time. So maybe I'll write it like that, so distance over time. Now, as far as these are concerned then, well, the distance we just traveled is two pi r, isn't it? So we'll say two pi r. Divide that by the time, which is the period. So really, we can say then that the angular frequency, you know, this uh, value right here, this omega, is just equal to this 2 pi r over t. Now, this isn't exactly uh, how it's in the data booklet, but I just want to explain that this hopefully should make some sense. It's like a speed. It's a distance over a time. And you notice, and that's why I put this joke right here from South Park, when you're calculating angular frequency, you're going to have a, instead of a bad time, you're going to have a radian over time. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so let's consider then simple harmonic motion and the graph. So again, just to remind you, then we have this equation A equals minus omega squared x. And what I want to do is recognize this is what we call linearization. This idea that, do you remember uh, the equation for a straight line? It goes y equals m times x plus c, or some people will use a plus b, doesn't matter. Remember though what this means, that y is just a y value, x is an x value, but what's m? The meaning of m, if you remember, it's the gradient, or the slope, as some people like to call it. Fine, so that's the gradient. And what's the meaning of this c here, this extra number hanging around? That's just the y-intercept. Now this is gonna be important for us because that's why I wrote this down, this linearization, this ability to spot something as linear and then extract meaning from the gradient and the y-intercept is a super important skill. It shows up so often. So what does that mean? Well, that means if we looked at this equation right here, you know, this, this one right here, if we spot it, if this is the y value, and if this right here is the x value, then what is this junk in front of it? Well, the stuff in front of it, then this one right here, this one must be then the gradient. Do you see why? Because that's because I had that linearization equation down below here. So this is really, really key. Now, what's the y-intercept? In this case, is a plus zero, so that means you know it, it crosses at zero. So that's why I have my equation that's going to look like, well, let's see, it's linear. Although there's an omega squared, we're graphing a versus x. So this graph of a versus x is going to be linear. So that means I could draw myself some kind of uh, straight line going through the origin. Let's just see here if it'll fix it. Yeah, something like that, for example. Now, let's look at this one. So what does this really mean? Well, the gradient then is going to be the omega squared. Technically, though, the gradient is going to be a negative, so let's take the absolute value of this, okay? So the absolute value of the gradient, that's going to be equal to omega squared. Well, that means if I want to get omega by itself then, I would say omega, omega then it's just going to be technically plus or minus the square root of the gradient. But of course, remember the gradient, we're going to take the positive version of it here, so we're going to say omega squared is going to be the, you know, square root of the gradient. Okay, why is this helpful for us? Well, that's because we can then uh, solve all sorts of questions. This is how we do this stuff in practice. Now, what we often do is we ignore the sign of the gradient. So uh, 
you know, this one here, if the gradient is a negative, which it will be, uh, we just ignore the negative and we just say, okay, well, let's just, let's just keep the positive version of the gradient. Like I said before, is this, this ability to spot uh, something that doesn't look linear necessarily as a linear function is a really key skill for your exams. The frequency of bad physics jokes hurts. <laughs> so we've got some key equations here to look at. Uh, first of all, if you remember what uh, frequency is, frequency is 1 over the period. So if I wanted to write down the period then, I would say then uh, the period then is just 1 over f. Okay, what else do we have? Well, remember we just learned that the angular frequency, this omega, that equals, let's see, it's the distance over time but in a circle. So it's 2 pi radians over the period. And if I wanted to get that in terms of the period, then it would be t equals, let's see, I would just put this up here, put this down here. So it would be 2 pi over omega. And that's why we end up then with this equation that just combines all these. So it just uses the left side, uh, sorry, the top part and the bottom part. So the equation you actually get on your data booklet, I just wanted to show you where everything came from because it was really quick actually. So we have t equals 1 over f, which also equals 2 pi over omega. It basically depends what do you know, and you can then figure this out. So the good news, this, this part right here is on your data booklet, which is awesome. And let's see, your t, uh, that's the period of oscillations, that's going to be in seconds. F is the frequency, that's in hertz, that's why I put this stupid one here. And then the angular frequency, remember, is going to be in radians per second. Okay, so radians per second. All right, so here's an exam tip right here, is that this idea, this uh, you know, frequency is equal to 1 over t, is super important for the rest of the topic. And by the way, because we had this one right here, we also have this you know, equation that, okay, if we want uh, 1 over f, let's also do this one here. So 1 over f equals 2 pi over omega. Well, that means we can also then rearrange this one here and get omega, you know, we can put the omega over here, put the f over here. So that means a useful form then could be that omega equals just 2 pi f. I just want to show you that you can play around with these equations to get whatever you need. Okay, okay so let's consider now the period for a spring. And remember, uh, there's going to be a mass on a spring at least going back and forth. Uh, we're going to have an equation for it. This is in your data booklet, which is kind of nice, and it goes like this. It goes t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. This is the equation here that you're going to need. Now just remind ourselves, t, that's the period, that's the, the time it takes to do, you know, one complete uh, um, cycle, so we'll do that in seconds. Mass is going to be in kilograms, and k is a spring constant. If you remember, what are the units of a spring constant? Uh, well, we have f equals kx, that's Hooke's law. So that means uh, if I got k by itself, it would be f over x, so that would be newtons per meter. You could always look that up um, in your data book, at least the equation for Hooke's law. But okay, so this right here, what it really tells you then is, hey, if you did a graph of t versus m, well, Look at it very carefully here. We're going to ignore the 2 pi and the k. So we could say here then the t is proportional to, maybe I'll write in a different uh, color. I'll say, oh, that means that t is proportional to um, square root of m. So if that's the case, then what would this graph look like? So a graph of t versus m will look like a square root graph. If you remember what a square root graph, it goes like this. Now the problem is, this isn't very helpful. I can't really tell, you know, a gradient from this. Well, I can, then I have to use calculus and find a gradient at a point. So instead, we're going to linearize. Remember this whole idea of y equals mx plus b, or plus c. So this whole idea of trying to get this thing here so something is linear, the x, uh, or this one right here, I basically want to get rid of the square root of m here. I need to do something to get rid of that uh, square root. So what would I do? If I want to get rid of the square root, I should probably square both sides. So can you see that I'm going to end up with, let's see, I'm going to have t squared equals, uh, well, 2 pi squared is going to be 4 pi squared. And if I square the m over k, uh, square root of m over k, squaring it just undoes it, so I have m over k. So I'm going to put the m over here, and instead of doing over k down here, I'll just push it over here just so it's a little bit easier to look at. And the reason I do this, although it doesn't seem obvious, look here. This right here then, if you recognize it, this is just my y value. This is just my x value, 
And that means that this mess in front of it, that's my gradient. So this part right here, this 4 pi squared over k, that's my gradient. And if that's the case, then what can I do? Well, that means I can actually draw this whole thing right here as a straight line. Okay, so I'll do that right now. So that means uh, this one here, if I do a graph of t squared versus m, so I'll do t squared here. Well, that'll be measured in seconds squared, of course. Uh, what will that graph look like? This will now be a straight line through the origin, so that'll be like this maybe. And what do I know? I know that the gradient will be equal to 4 pi squared over k. Well, if that's the case then, I can, if I want to get k by itself, so I'll put that like this here, so that means if I want to get k, it's just going to be, I'll put it up here, it's going to be 4 pi squared over the gradient. And that's it. So do you see how useful this is? A graph of t versus m wasn't quite so helpful. But, do you notice that this right here though, if I did a graph of t squared versus m, I linearized this thing, then that meant that I could actually find, uh, well, the gradient of this straight line. Now what does it mean? Well, k is going to be 4 pi squared over the gradient. So that could be very helpful. I just want to introduce you to this skill of linearizing. So now let's do this example again, uh, well this whole idea, but this time with a pendulum going back and forth. So if it's a pendulum like this here, we have an equation for it. It's very similar to the last one. It goes t equals 2 pi square root of, but instead of being m over k, it's l over g. Okay, so let's do the uh, period. The period is going to be measured in seconds, so that's good. Uh, what about L? L is going to be the length of a pendulum. That's how long it is from the top to the bottom there. So we'll measure that in meters. And G will be the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, of course, which is 9.8, and we'll say meters per second squared. All right, well, again, that means if I looked at this then, what can I say? If I ignore the 2 pi and the G because they're just constants, I could say that T, the period, is proportional to square root of L. That means if I did a graph then of T versus L, it's going to be a square root graph, so it's going to look something like this, which, again, isn't very helpful. So instead, I'm going to try to linearize this. I'm going to try to get rid of the square root of L. What do I do there? I square both sides. So that means I end up with T squared equals, again, um, let's see, 2 pi squared is going to be... 4 pi squared. And if I square the square root of L over G, the square root does a square root, so that means I just end up with an L. I could put the G over here just to simplify it a little bit, because then I could say uh, this piece right here, that's going to be the Y value. This one here is going to be the X. And what happens here now? This time I've got this piece right here, and that's the gradient. So it's just like what we've just done before. And that means then, if I want to graph then T squared which is going to be in seconds squared, against L. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get a straight line graph, like this right here. And remember, where the gradient is going to be equal to 4 pi squared over G. Okay, so if I have the gradient as 4 pi squared over G, what does that mean? Well, that means I can say then that G will be equal to, if I want to try to find the acceleration due to gravity, it means it'll just be, I put this up, put this down, it'll be 4 pi squared over gradient. And what does this mean? This means that if you did this experiment, let's say you, you did an experiment where you had a bunch of different length pendulums, for example, um, and you measured the period of oscillation of all of those different pendulums, so you got L versus T, and you did a graph of T squared versus L, then it means that the acceleration due to gravity could actually be found just from this experiment. So again, I'm just trying to show you that linearizing is such an important skill. You can play with pretty much any equation you know, that doesn't look linear and make it linear, or uh, you can look at a, an equation and recognize that it's linear, and then you can tell something about it.